Let me encourage everyone to have a seat, please. Thank you. Okay. Let me encourage everyone to have a seat, please, and we're going to get started. Thank you. Short windows. <laughs> All right, but before you speak, I'm going to ask Miss Usselton if she would to properly introduce you. So where's Miss Usselton? There she comes. So there's some seats. So those of you in the hallway, come on in if you'd like and have a seat. And we're going to ask Miss Usselton if she would to introduce Dr. Stevens and then ask Dr. Stevens if she would to make a few brief comments. And, um, and then in about five minutes later, I'm going to be offering the state, my 18th and final State of the City address. And it really contains, I think, some good information. So those of you that are able to, uh, you're welcome, <coughs> welcome to stay. Ms. Elsa, turn the floor is yours. She, Ms. Thank Elsa, you all, Ms. first of all, for, for having the reception, Mayor Curley and the Alderman and everyone here. Um, we just appreciate it so much, and we're going to celebrate Dr. Stevens when we can. But the school board has not even had an in-person meeting yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll be joining, joining other people very soon. Um, Dr. Katrine Stevens and her husband, Sane, who's with her today, um, are here today, sorry. Uh, Dr. Stevens has been an elementary school teacher, a Title I <coughs> teacher, an instructional specialist, an assistant principal, a principal, an instructor at MTSU, an adjunct professor at Lipscomb University, and most recently the associate director of schools for teaching and learning for Franklin Special School District. In her cover letter, Dr. Stevens quoted Steve Jobs stating, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. It is obvious in the short time that she has been with us that she loves what she does, and she is great. So welcome, Dr. Stevens. Welcome. That is true. I absolutely do. Thank you, Mayor Curley and Alderman, for hosting this reception and making me feel so very welcome in Tullahoma. I was fortunate to spend my one week anniversary with you all just a couple of weeks ago as I shared the proposed 2021 school year budget and now on my third week anniversary I'm back again. <laughs> as I begin this evening I want you to know I am a positive product of public education. A teacher changed my life and I bet some of you can relate to that statement. This teacher took genuine interest in me, saw my potential, helped me see my value and worth, and believed in me along the way. I chose this field to make a difference in the lives of those I serve, just like what was done for me all those years ago. I'll be entering my 32nd year as an educator. I started when I was five. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> And I have the same joy and the same commitment to making a difference as I had all those years ago. So during my first three weeks in Tullahoma, I've had the great pleasure of meeting some of our students, even here this evening. Parents, teachers, staff leaders, and community members. With each meeting, I have walked away feeling even more thankful to be a part of this tight-knit community. On a personal note, my husband and I are building a home here in Tullahoma, and we look forward to being active members in T-Town. Although this is a strange time to arrive in the midst of COVID-19, I can assure you that we will do our best to make the opening positive for all. Gathering input from an array of stakeholders, including physicians, nurses, parents, school board members, members of the health department, EMA, EMS, faculty and staff, etc., through both personal meetings and surveys has been very helpful to get a better understanding of both what is desired and what is needed. As I said to you a couple of weeks ago, and I want to reiterate, the support from the board of mayor and aldermen for our schools, district, and the school board is essential as we work together to mold our youngest citizens into productive and positive adults who give back to the community and make a difference in the world around them. 
I look forward to our partnership in this most important work. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Stevens. We appreciate very much you being with us tonight, and uh, we look forward to seeing you around the community, and look forward to really big things from you over the, over the coming years, and welcome to your husband as well. Okay, let's, um, we've got just a couple of procedural items. First is the public hearing, a public hearing on the proposed annual budget ordinance for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, and ending June 30th. 2021. Does anyone in the audience have any reason to ad address the board at this time regarding the proposed budget? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and go directly into the um, formal portion of the agenda. First is the roll call. Ms. Golden. Yes. Mayor Lane Curley. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Blanks. All the person Barry. Here. Blackwell. Here. Dunn. Here. Nois. Here. Mathis. Here. Six present. All right, the chair takes a quorum, so we will proceed. We're very pleased that Reverend Don Dixon is with us again this evening. Reverend Dixon will step to the podium and offer our invocation. We ask everyone to please stand and remain standing as Dr. Dixon leads, our, uh, leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Dr. Stevens, I have to be, this is my third time this month to be here to pray. <laughs> I want to suggest to you, if I have to pray in July, I may run for Alton. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we pray together? Eternal God and creator of all, because we're in the same storm but are in different boats, help us to hear and listen to one another. And help our city to be inclusive of all. Bless all efforts for diversity so that the purpose of Tullahoma may match the pledge we will make in a few seconds that includes one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hear our petition, we ask in thy name. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. You offer me to take up that. <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to say, Dr. Dixon. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to call on Ms. Dunn. She um, asked her to step to the podium and introduce a, a gentleman that's with us tonight. Ms. Dunn. Jennifer and his his daughter Edie and Edie was in Murray's class once upon a time so but um, yes yeah, so you're, you're going into first grade this year but Bert was very busy last August so you want to tell us what you were up to for those that don't know me I am a firearms engraver I work out of my house and I specialize in doing very high-end artwork on highly collectible unusual firearms sporting arms rifles and uh, as such, I know quite a few people in the hunting and guiding and outfitting business and so forth all over the world, actually, uh, United States as well as Africa and other places abroad. Um, a lot of my clients are really into uh, seeing that the guns that I work on, that I produce, can actually be used for sporting purposes and part of what I do is take them out in the field take my take the guns that I work on out in the field and give them a field trial so to speak um, and last August I worked on a rifle that um, was a American Custom Gunmakers Guild rifle and as the culmination to it I contacted a fellow that I know that does hog hunts here in Tennessee and he said, oh, yeah, I got some huge ones hanging on my property. 
And so I went up to the Jamestown area, which is uh, a little bit north of Cookville, uh, out in that area. And for those that don't know, there's a lot of wild hogs out there. They're everywhere. They're rampant. You can't get rid of them to speak of. They, they breed uh, incessantly. And uh, from six months old onwards, they produce litters of eight to 12 hogs every three to six months. So it's a invasive species that is hard to control. They do tremendous amount of damage. And when they get to this, this size, uh, 500 plus pounds, all the way up to 850, 950 pounds, they absolutely do tremendous damage. Um, we got there, we went out looking for these guys, found this one. It was obviously very hot being August in middle Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, late afternoon, walked up on them. They were in these wallows that were looked essentially like moon craters that they had they had dug out of the ground. I mean, they were enormous. Um, being so hot, they were very lethargic. And we had to kind of prompt them a little bit to get them up and <laughs> make it a sporting event. <laughs> Anyhow, this big fella jumped up, wheeled around, started coming at me. And it, this was real close quarters, uh, 25 yards or less. So I threw my rifle up instinctively, and one shot went down. Um, 338 caliber, which is a Wildcat cartridge built off of the 30 caliber, uh, 30 out six Springfield, 30 government, whatever you like to call it, uh, cartridge necked up for a larger bullet. Um, very effective for large dangerous game. Uh, the shot entered from behind the shoulder and actually came out through the top of the skull here. Uh, as you can see the hole right there. I was really hoping that Jimmy was going to be here because I know he duck hunts and I didn't know whether he'd ever taken down a duck. This big. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I hope not. I hope not. This, this is just the skull. At the, the one fellow that was with me uh, that helped get this monster out of the woods uh, was considered, I'm not a little guy by any stretch of the imagination, but this guy, he was a lot bigger than me. And even the pictures of me and that guy standing next to this, this monster made both of us look small. Uh, so this is just, it's hard to visualize this in relationship to the real animal. I've got one that I also shot that day that was 500 pounds uh, mounted in my studio. Unfortunately, this one was so big, the only way that I could memorialize this trophy was to do a, a skull, um, you know, boil off the flesh of the skull here and have a skull or European style mount for this animal. Um, there's no forms available big enough to handle an animal this large. So, Ms. Dunn, do you have a presentation you'd I, like to make? I do. I just I want to say first that this is just uh, remarkable. I mean, this is an invasive species, and we're you know we're all trying to do our part to to protect our, our natural spaces. And, and Bert really took it literally head on. So thank you very much. So um, this is the city of Tullahoma. A certificate of recognition is being presented to Bert Edmondson for his takedown of an 850 pound wild boar quite possibly the largest boar, boar ever hunted in Tennessee and the second largest in the United States, according to my Google research. <laughs> Bert is helping to control the population of 12 million wild boar. The wild boar is an invasive and devastating species for the Southeast. So on behalf of the 18,655 citizens that call Tullahoma home and by the authority vested in me uh, as mayor of Tullahoma, that's not me. But I now therefore <laughs> proclaim Monday, June 22nd, 2020, Bert Edmondson Day. So congratulations, Bert. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bert. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming. Okay, sure, sure. Mr. Worsham. You've probably been in this room longer than anyone else. Do you ever recall a skull being placed on the, the dais at the City Hall? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works for everything. Yeah. 
I want to see an armadillo skull next time. That's what's getting us now. Mr. Emerson, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it. Congratulations on your achievement. You know, this board always rec loves to recognize achievement. So thank you. Okay, anyone in the audience have anything to address the board that's not later on the agenda? All right, seeing none, we will proceed. Uh, we're ready for board reports. Mr. Mathis? No report tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Barry? i uh, got a couple things here. Uh, busy weekend. Um, Friday and Saturday, I got to go out and watch some softball and baseball, which was great. Um, Saturday at Johnson Lane, I want to say, I thought I saw Kurt here. Those guys did an amazing job on the fields and walking around there got a bunch of compliments. I think there were 17, 18 teams. Um, so they really enjoyed that. Um, Grider Stadium looked great. It was the high school's summer ball team. Um, Friday night, <clears throat> that was an exciting event at South Jackson Civic Center. Um, we got to watch one of our local filmmakers and high school student, uh, Colin Saran. It's difficult to believe he's in high school. Um, and his public premiere of My Friend Carl, um, which is about also a graduate here of Tullahoma High School, uh, Carl Smithson. Um, if you haven't seen it, I believe it'll be coming to Amazon Prime. Uh, soon uh, so look for that also real quick I saw these in the department ports a couple shout outs to Tullahoma Police Department uh, patrolman Jessica Taylor uh, for her life-saving efforts on a three-month-old um, and then to our investigators of patrol division for their team effort in recovering the missing six-year-old um, thank you to Sergeant Sons and Corporal Arthur for their investigations and the rest of those who are responsible uh, for committing two armed robberies and several uh, burglaries here in Tullahoma. You guys are on a roll. And also Corporal Justin Smith and Patrolman Dotson, seven years of dedicated service here to the community. So thank you to all the departments, but thank you to TPD. You guys put that in your department reports. So thank you. Yeah, good, good job. Good group. Ms. Blackwell. Yes, so since our last um, meeting, we had a planning commission study session as well as a planning commission meeting. I'm sure Alder Mononis will talk about it as well in a few minutes. But uh, one of the things that came out of our study session is just we talked a lot about the need, and I think, for a um, comprehensive land use plan and what that will do for our city. So um, I'm sure we'll talk about that more later. Um, Another thing that came out of our planning commission meeting is the approval of um, the Pinnacle Point, which is out on Avoca Road, and I just want to let people know about that. I know people, I know that the planning commission meetings aren't always the most exciting meetings to watch, but there's a lot of stuff happening. Mm -hmm. School board meeting as well. Um, there is discussion around their budget, and next year's house schooling is going to be, I'm sure most parents have seen, if they haven't already, that there's an email that came out. The school board is asking for, and our um, city schools are asking for our feedback on what it will look like for next year. And then my last thing is about the Diversity Council. Our first meeting will be July 7th at 6 p.m. at Mount Zion Baptist <coughs> Church. Really excited to get that forward. Um, I know that people have been sending in some participation forms, citizen participation forms. They are online, and I can message you them as well. And I'm holding my like office hour thing again. Um, we're going to just start that back up. Next Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m., I'd originally said 12 to 2, but my son changed his nap schedule, of course. So 1 to 3 p.m., um, it's on my Facebook page. I'll also send out an email about it but um, and put it in the newspaper as well. I'll reach out to Aaron to see if we can do that. So next Thursday, 1 to 3 p.m., and I think I'm going to do it at the Celtic Cup since there's outdoor seating. So, so Baby Jack's already influencing policy. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> okay, Miss Dunn. Sure. Um, we have, over this past couple of weeks, we installed the rain garden. So the rain garden is in, and it's beautiful. It's over behind East Lincoln, so if you haven't had a chance to look at it, it's, it's a really awesome space, and it's continuing to change. So um, a lot of thanks to the, the volunteers who came out and to Public Works who got that started for us. So it's been, um, it's been a 
it's been quite a journey, you know, from the planning stages last year to actually having it in the ground. Um, now it's been, it's, I'm really glad that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's completed. Um, I serve on the Housing Authority, but we have not, or as a liaison, I apologize, uh, but we have not had a meeting um, for several months, but I do want to tell people that the next Housing Authority meeting should be in person uh, on July 16th at 5 o'clock, so if you're wanting to, to attend that, that is a public meeting. <coughs> it might be prudent to go ahead and call in to make sure that they have enough space to, to um, house everybody um, during that meeting. And then July 6th is a Monday. The, the first Monday, uh, we'll have our Go Green meeting at 5 o'clock. So if anybody would like to come, that should be here at City Hall. So, and the Housing Authority meeting is at uh, the Cedar Lane apartment. So, but yeah, that's it. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nellis, please, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, nothing to report from the Airport Authority, as um, Leah is on there. But on the Planning Commission, we are engaged uh, diligently looking at a plan, land use map for the city. We were funded to get that done during this next year. Uh, sorely, sorely needed uh, for developers to know what that, what the plan, what the plans are for the various lands that are available in towns. So we'll get that done. Uh, as uh, noted earlier, the uh, event on Friday evening was uh, spectacular. Did nothing less than spectacular for <coughs> Tullahoma to have an event like that. Not only was it a quality production, but uh, the subject matter was very, very appropriate that we address that issue and what a fine job our Colin Saran did and uh, with the subject of Carl uh, Smithson for that. So my hat's off to both of those individuals and do a great job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thought it was very, very well done. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me... Golden, if you would pass those around. Miss Moody, I'm going to give these to you if you want to distribute those to whoever you want to. These are the State of the City addresses. Thank you. Okay, to the Board of Aldermen, the citizens of Tullahoma. Uh, for the 18th and last time, I present a budget message and State of the City to you as Mayor. I appreciate this opportunity to discuss the economic vitality of Tullahoma, as well as some of the achievements that have shaped our community the past year. I am pleased to report the city government enjoys an AA2 bond rating, one of the highest in the state for a community our size. The city government once again had no audit findings. Your city government earned the GFOA Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Management, as well as the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award one of the few cities in Tennessee to have that distinction. These are independent and objective measures of how your tax monies are managed and measured for financial soundness. This budget represents a fiscally conservative approach to manage the fiscal affairs of city government. I appreciate the leadership of City Administrator Jennifer Moody and Finance Director Sue Wilson for their professional approach in managing the fiscal affairs of city government. I also appreciate the department heads for their leadership and management of the day-to-day -day affairs in their departments. I'm pleased to report we have met the biggest challenge Tullahoma and the world has experienced in years. As of today, 99 people in Coffee County have tested positive for COVID-19, and fortunately no deaths from the virus have been reported, and all but 25 have recovered. The coronavirus has challenged our city both fiscally and emotionally. In March, Ms. Moody took decisive fiscal action curtailing expenditures across all departments of city government. I appreciate her quick action. The preparation of this budget has been a particular challenge with all the uncertainty. Emotionally, I'm confident many citizens, telling the citizens, have scars that will take time to heal. The Coffee County May unemployment rate is an unbelievably high 19.8%. However, I'm encouraged to see so many help wanted signs in businesses around town. I know of many instances when Tullahoma citizens stepped up to help their neighbors. I appreciate Alderman Dunn and citizen Lee Fogel coordinating a community effort to help citizens in need. I also appreciate several members of the Mayor's Youth Council for their help in contacting over 1,000 senior citizens to make sure their basic needs were being met. I have faith in Tullahoma's diverse economy, strong entrepreneurial sector, and livability, and that will continue to attract both private and public investment. Now to the budget before you. This budget represents our best effort at preserving, managing, and building the assets of Tullahoma. 
whether these are people, buildings, or programs. I welcome the board's and citizens' suggestions and offers of improvement. The budget, as proposed, contains no property tax increase for the next fiscal year and is balanced. It, is, it does not appropriate additional monies for Tullahoma City Schools. The departments of city government made requests to improve or enhance services that will not be funded in this budget. Thanks to excellent financial stewardship, total operating expenditures are down 3.7 percent. Step raises are included for city government employees. Other 2021 budget highlights include, because of COVID-19, total city government revenues are projected to be down 3.3 percent based on state and national projections. However, so far, Tullahoma saw a 6.1 percent increase in sales tax collections in March, year over year, and as of Saturday, an incredible 8.4 percent increase in sales tax collections for April. <coughs> This is in contrast to the state's sales tax collections in April of a decrease of 14 percent year over year. If this trend continues, modifications to the budget can be made during the fiscal year. This increase, in my opinion, is primarily due to Tullahoma being positioned as a retail hub and the number of grocery stores and other stores selling essential items. Nearly every department of city government will see a decrease in expenditures in this next year with a total decrease of 3.7%. Once again, I appreciate the work of Ms. Moody and Ms. Wilson and the department heads for aligning expenditures with anticipated revenues. I realize there were many difficult decisions made in this budget. The city government will receive a direct appropriation of over $450,000 in stimulus funds. There are no strings attached to this money. It can be used for capital expenditures or to balance the budget should conditions turn south. Our seven new community initiatives are seeing active community engagement. I continue to look for big things from Get Fit Tullahoma and the Tourism, Downtown, Arts, Go Green, Sports, and Entrepreneur Councils. I'm also excited about the Diversity Council as proposed by Alderman Blackwell. All of these are designed to enhance the quality of life in Tullahoma. It is also important we design a community to which our young families want to remain, return, or relocate. My research tells me these young families want to live in artsy, green, fitness-oriented communities like we are trying to build here. Despite the national and international challenges that have impacted Tullahoma, I am so proud and pleased with what the people of Tullahoma have accomplished this year. I'll mention but a few. In March, the Tullahoma Micropolitan Area was recognized as the number 37 Micropolitan Area in the U.S. by Site Selection Magazine, 37 in the country. In May, the Tullahoma Micropolitan Area was ranked seventh nationally for our entrepreneurial ecosystem's capacity to foster strong growth by a think tank affiliated by the Wal with the Walton Foundation. Polycon once again selected the Tullahoma Micropolitan Area as the number one <coughs> micropolitan area in the state. Friends, these are all objective uh, evaluations of our community. And we are 37 in the country in one, seven in the country in another, and first in Tennessee. Over 100 new companies now call Tullahoma home. The Chamber of Commerce added 46 new members, bringing their total membership to over 400, breaking their record. The 2020 THS graduates once again earned millions of dollars in scholarship monies. The Thomas City Schools nutrition staff served over 100,000 meals to children during the extended school closure. Tullahoma was one of 10 communities selected in the TVA region to participate in the Innovation Academy to develop methods to boost entrepreneurial startups in Tullahoma. We welcomed several high profile retailers and saw several local industries expand. Light tube subscriber counts exceeded 4,000. TUA dedicated their solar farm. There were 582 <coughs> building permits with a total valuation of $49,954,521.41. Remarkable. Downtown renovations are continuing with much more work in progress. The Sports Council inducted the second group of Tullahoma Sports Hall of Fame honorees. In my opinion, our chief job as mayor and alderman is to define our vision and inspire the community to help reach the vision. 
it is critical we keep our eyes on our bold vision for Tullahoma to be considered world-class in everything we do. From job creation to cleanliness to high school graduation rates and everything in between, I want Tullahoma to be the best and considered a world-class community. There appears to be a great deal of confidence in Tullahoma, both from citizens already here and from outsiders looking to invest here, and many more exciting things are on the drawing board. By growing Tullahoma, diverse jobs will be created from entry level to the professional level. The opportunities are ours, but we do not want to wait on opportunities, we want to create them. Many of the positive actions I presented are due to the efforts of the city government and affiliated agencies. However, there are countless acts of goodwill that quietly happen every day by Tullahoma citizens, businesses, churches, and organizations that truly make a positive difference in the lives of all Tullahomans. Thanks everyone for all you do to make Tullahoma a great place to work, live, play, and raise our families. Once again, I want to challenge all of us by three thoughts. Great cities are intentional, not accidental. In other words, we must have a plan and take strategic steps to accomplish our plan. Number two, why can't Tullahoma be the best in everything we do? Some city is going to be the best. Why not Tullahoma? We should always strive to be the best in everything we do. Number three, if you really love Tullahoma, you have to help make Tullahoma better. We all have opportunities to improve Tullahoma, whether through your school, job, civic club, church, neighborhood, or household. Get involved. Make a difference. Leave Tullahoma better than when you found it. In summary, Tullahoma is truly a blessed community. We have so much to be thankful for and so much to look forward to. While it truly is a great day to be in Tullahoma, let's always remember we can make a great community even greater. Let's leave Tullahoma better than when we found it by the work we do and the decisions we make. I look forward to watching what this board, the city government, and the citizens of Tullahoma accomplish in the next fiscal year. It truly is a great day to be in Tullahoma. Thank you. Okay, we're ready for the city attorney's report. Mr. Worsham. As you all know, I'm one of the members of the downtown committee, and we're making some strides here. You might have noticed the construction activities going on at London's downtown. This is part of an initiative that we discussed at our last board meeting to allow them to have an outdoor seating capacity for their restaurant and their other operations. The, the fence, which is going to be a temporary one, pending a more expensive and nicer wall eventually, is under construction now. And at the next board meeting, we'll be presenting to you a lease that I have prepared with the uh, conjunction with Ms. Moody uh, to allow you to evaluate it along with uh, the uh, people that own London, who will also be looking at it and will be negotiating something to present to you all for your consideration, hopefully for your execution. The other important thing that we're doing in downtown is beginning to work on the downtown plantings there. And I understand that Ms. Shelley Smith, who works with the city and Motlow College and the Shady Grove Garden Club have uh, constructed or have planted an area in front of London's that's very beautiful with native plants. So you ought to go by and look at that. It's very, very nice. And Mr. Brooks has made arrangements for the maintenance of that and the other downtown plantings for the city. Those are totally non-legal matters. Of course, the lease is. The uh, legal matters that we are working on, as you recall, is continuing to develop the data necessary to have a delinquent tax sale later on this year. Uh, there are a number of properties that don't pay taxes or the owners don't, and we're working on that. That's quite an onerous task. It's going to take a lot, a lot of time, but we plan to have that hopefully by the end of this calendar year. And in conjunction with that, Ms. Moody has pointed out to me that there's a house here in our town that is known as a meth house and we're in the process of conducting the research necessary to eradicate that. Fortunately, in one way, we can address it through the delinquency tax sale because there are a number of years of delinquent property taxes owed on that property, and I think we will go through that route rather than other litigation, which will save the city some expenses. Other than that, just the routine things that we already work on. Do you have any questions about anything? Thank you, Mr. Worsham. Okay, thank you. Okay, ready for the city administrator's report. Mrs. Moody, please. Thank you so much. Um, I was thinking along the same lines as Alderman Barry and wanted to ask Chief Williams.
Williams to step up if he could. Um, a couple of our officers, I'm sure you saw in the Tullahoma News recently, um, acted quickly to save a life, and I wanted him to tell you more about that. Yes, I wanted to get that onto the information that we send out, but I missed the deadline for it. But hopefully you saw the news uh, where we had some officers that uh, put in a situation and very fortunately able, I think, to save a lady's life when her house caught on fire on Washington Street here in town. Happened, I think, Sunday the 14th, I believe. Uh, officer, Patrolwoman Taylor, Patrolwoman Lee, uh, Patrolman Coleman, and Patrolman Young uh, were able to get on the scene pretty quickly and the house was already becoming engulfed uh, where you could see the flames starting to come out. And they went into the house and retrieved a woman who uh, on her own probably wouldn't have necessarily been able to make it out as things were starting to deteriorate pretty quickly into the household. Um, so I wanted to get that on there, but I just want to say I, I, how proud I am of my men and women and the actions that they take. Uh, and you know, it's, I know this is something that made it into the paper, but I mean, these are a lot of the things that I get to see day in, day out of my men and women, and also all of our public safety professionals. Uh, so I just wanted to step up and tell you that I'm very proud of their actions and uh, the actions they took that day probably more than likely saved this lady's life. Um, and then also with the partnerships that we have with the Tallahoma Fire Department and our other emergency services, which are then able to render medical aid to the woman and to give Chief Shastine a plug here. Uh, you know, if anybody's listening, they offer a program to go out and put uh, smoke detectors into people's houses and that probably can't be uh, sold enough. So, and they'll do it free of charge, I believe, so. But, yeah. Thank you for sharing Thank you, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Another thing I really like about that story is it's another example of how well our fire department and police department work together, and we take that for granted here. It doesn't happen as well as it does here in every city. And so I really commend both of the chiefs for the work that they've done to make that make that happen with our teams. Um, also, I appreciate that in your mayor's address, but I wanted to point it out again that the local support grant money from the state has now changed in the final passage of the state's budget. And instead of us applying for our allocation and it being restricted to only about four or five uses, they have made it an allocation where we'll just be able to replace lost revenue with that funding. So it sort of opens the door to what we can use it for. Um, because it is one-time money, we're still thinking of it uh, for capital projects or one-time expenditures. And that's something that once we get budget passed, get our current year budget amended, then we'll bring forward a capital plan uh, to discuss with you guys. Uh, also want to um, mention some of the rescues that have been going on at Short Springs Natural Area. One, just to remind the public to, uh, to really look at trails before you go out. We want you to enjoy our natural areas. Um, some are much more rigorous than others and that needs to be investigated maybe before you get out there. But I do appreciate the, the work that's gone into it. And again, another partnership between police our fire department and our public works. Um, a lot of residents in that area, while they love living next to the natural area, maybe do not love the overcrowding and the illegal parking that goes out on out there. So we have put up a lot of no parking signage to make people more aware of areas where they should not be parked. And uh, we're putting some staff out there during peak times to give warnings and then um, issue citations if necessary and we've had I think several residents reach out to them and say thank you we're glad you're out here uh, also as you know construction of the police building continues still on track um, despite some rain earlier in the spring I think they've caught up pretty quickly and you see them working on weekends even um, I've also been impressed with um, with the contractor and how clean they've kept the site, how well organized, so I appreciate that. I uh, wanted to share with you that our police department personnel have put their personal touch on the building. They've had a, a metal beam out there that they've been signing and it'll be kind of the last beam placed in the building. Um, so that has been good. 
we started construction on Silver Street and Freeman Street, the new park, um, and then also have a lot of exciting commercial developments, again, like you mentioned. I did want to point out in my uh, department report cover letter, I had a typo. Um, so the one address should have been 1511 North Jackson Street. We have Cowling Nails moving out of the mall to that new location. And then some of you probably already seen it, but I wanted to mention we are patching on Cedar Lane, and that's just a good opportunity for me to remind you there's a major repaving project needed on Cedar Lane. It's about a $450,000 project. So this patching is a temporary fix, getting us by until we can do that larger repaving project. Also, Public Works uh, is completing a sidewalk replacement near Bel Air Elementary School. Uh, and wanted to let the public know that the city, we have lifted our hiring freeze in preparation for going into our new budget year that starts on July 1. Any of our vacant positions were out there actively recruiting and advertising open positions. Um, Splash Island will open this week on Wednesday. Um, so very excited about that. And we're hoping to extend our season this year, knowing that we got a late start um, if the weather holds out and attendance holds out, we're going to stay open longer this year to make up for it. Um, also, I wanted to follow up with you guys on some citizen requests that I know you've seen and you're probably wondering. Um, McKellar Drive and Country Club Lane both have gotten new speed limit signs at request of some of our uh, residents. And then wanted to make you aware that uh, Public Works Director Butch Taylor and I have received a petition from residents of Kensington Lane, Castle Walk, and Chadsworth Place in the Kings Ridge subdivision, and they were asking for roads in their neighborhood to be repaved. So we will look at the, take a look at that and prepare a response and share that with you as soon as we have it. And then want to commend, our, again, our Public Works Department. They had a two-day audit of the stormwater program from TDEC, and from preliminary comments, I think we fared pretty well. Um, there were some comments and feedback that we need to improve our website, as we know, and have more information, make it more easily available, and we'll be looking at how we can do that and how we can improve our public outreach as well. And then last but not least, I have to say, remind everybody, if you have not completed your census, the Census 2020 is going on. and. While we are doing well, Coffee County has a 67% return rate compared to 60% in the state. Um, but we need to keep pushing, get that message out, and, and have everybody turn in their census. That is all. Very good. Yeah. Good report. Thank you. Okay, we're ready for the consent agenda. We have three items, 20-52, the minutes of the June 8th, 2020 regular meeting. 2053 accept property tax adjustments as presented for taxes paid in fiscal year 2020 and 20-54 approve a mutual aid agreement with Arnold Air Force Base for fire protection and hazardous materials incident response. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Move to approve. I have a motion by Ms. Blackwell. Second. Second by Ms. Dillon. All those in favor of the consent agenda as presented vote green, opposed vote red. Motion passes six to zero. We have one item of old business, <coughs> number 1540, an ordinance of the city of Tallahassee, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, and ending June 30th, 2021, for passage on the third and final of three readings. <coughs> Move to approve. Call for motion by Mr. Novus. Second. Second by Ms. Blackwell. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Cut. Cut. Just a quick. Sure. I don't think I had the votes. I had the votes or anything about it. But I, I know that we agreed, or not agreed, but we talked about the community uh, allotments that we do. Uh, I wish we would have considered uh, putting that money, saying this is what we're going to do, and then uh, allocating it out after the fact. Uh, just because there's just I'm still just a little bothered by some of them who couldn't make it or didn't didn't try to make it uh, to show us what they wanted the money for, what they used it on, um, and just giving them that money without uh, 
justifying it. Okay. Are you talking about the non-profit? <coughs> what are you doing? The non-profit monies. Okay. Yeah. Um, see, we have the, the issue in um, the issue. <coughs> is, it's, it, we've got to pass it by June 30th. Right. right. Yeah. And, and we, we don't, there's, there's seven day notice of requirement, so we don't have time to yeah. do that tonight. But, but once again, I, or, I mean, I would suggest that this be a good <coughs> session topic to you know, get figured out for next year. Yeah. yeah, I would like to encourage, I know that the COVID kind of changed things, but this all just, we just seems like we didn't have a ton of discussions over some of this stuff here. Uh, and I sat through a couple of them watching Manchester do it. Uh, I wish that we would have had more discussions uh, on ours. Uh, but it's too late now really yeah. to do to do anything. <laughs> That's it. I can understand. Uh, uh, so this is your first budget that you've been through <coughs> the city. And I'm certainly open to conversations about format or how we could do something differently. Um, we didn't have as many <coughs> study sessions as we would have had. I mean, we definitely were delayed in that way, meeting on Zoom. Um, so we had it <coughs> almost an expedited process because of that. Uh, I did want to share with you on the allocations um, to the outside agencies. We do that on a monthly basis. So I feel like the way that we have put this budget together because there didn't appear to be a consensus among the board when it was discussed we just left it sure. as we've always done it and so since those are made monthly i would think whenever you if you make a change but we can't change those amounts you could oh, yes yeah, yeah. Sure. um what else oh and then i wanted to ask i don't see sue had prepared a nice cover memo that i do not see in your packet but I wanted to recognize her and give her the opportunity. Um, I think she wanted to point out a couple of revisions that are in this final amend, amended budget. Yes, I want to let you know this version we need um, an amendment to accept the budget as presented, which includes the Telephone City Schools budgets, which were not available until after they had their meeting. We'll them, consider them. And also, there are a couple of smaller funds in there. Um, which we're not, I didn't have the data for um, the second reading. Um, the building reserve, the medical trust reserve are in there now, and the industrial board. And additionally, um, the general fund has been modified to include the revenues and the expenses for opening Splash Island. So if we could amend the budget, the ordinance to accept everything as presented, that would include all those items. Is it who made the original motion? It was Noah's and then Blackwell's. <coughs> Are you okay with the, uh, the discussion by Ms. Wilson? <coughs> yes, I am. Okay. And who seconded it? Me. Blackwell. Well, do you think we need a formal, as long as we accept what's here, that's what we're voting on. <coughs> Is that included in this document that we have? <coughs> Right. Yeah. That yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, do we have that. Doc? We don't have that. It's what's yeah. yeah. You do. Yeah, what I, I don't see is her cover, cover. summary. Yeah. Right. yeah. I see you, the full ordinance is in here, but there was a cover memo where she had stated exactly change. how to say the right. motion. Right. And yeah. all of the solid waste is in here. All, all of those are in here. Yeah. Yeah. All the funds. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Novus is. Motion will include what's presented. And who made the second? Me. Blackwell. Are you okay? Yep. All right. Any other discussion? I just want to say thank you to Miss Moody because I sh I had a million questions. I feel like over the past couple of weeks, and she's been bearing with me and answering them throughout. Yeah. So you know, I feel thankful that you guys you walked me through this quite a bit in the past couple. So thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, all of those in favor of ordinance number 1540 as presented in the agenda package, vote green, opposed, vote red. Motion passes six to zero. 
Okay, this is great news on this next item. Um, resolution number 1830, a resolution authorizing the issuance of general obligation refunding bonds of the City of Tullam, Tennessee, making provision for the issuance, sale, and payment of said bonds, establishing the terms thereof and disposition of proceeds therefrom, and providing for the levy of taxes for the payment or principal of premium, if any, and the interest on the bonds. So let me get a motion to second. I'm going to defer to Ms. Moody or her designee for an explanation. Second. Oh, motion by Ms. Dunn, second by Ms. Blackwell. Ms. Moody. Well, actually, I'd like to recognize um, Ashley McAnulty, who has assisted us yeah. uh, so with this refund. I saw him here. There don't get many opportunities to meet him, but he yeah. uh, is a great resource to us, Sue Wilson, our finance director, and I, and uh, helping us with yeah. find a little more room in the budget due to this one. Yeah, so you've got an explanation in your agenda, so let me, anything you'd like to add to it, we're welcome. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman, for allowing me to come and speak to you tonight. I, I offer a brief summary if you'd like for me to. Sure. Uh, we have two bond issues that are approximately 3.8% to 4% rate. In the current market, we're seeing such low interest rates that they do produce a good level of savings for the city. And so we're looking at around a 1.41 true interest cost, which is about $95,000 a year in savings for the city of Tullahoma in the current market. Of course, when we get ready to sell the bonds, we will work with Sue Wilson and her office and Jennifer Moody to make sure that the bonds are sold at a certain time at a certain place competitively to achieve the lowest rate we can possibly achieve for the city and uh, award the bonds on that basis. But with that, I'd like to offer any questions you all might have. Just appreciate the opportunity. I want to commend you on your good financial report, Mayor, and also your lack of any findings in your audit. That's a tough task. I've traveled all over the state for about 20 years, and I've only seen it three or four occasions where people, where the issuer does not have any audit findings. So it's a very, it's a lot of work on the staff's part to make that happen. And I know the comptroller's office is proud of the, the work that y'all are doing to have a good audit and, and do that. Well, you gave me attribution. I don't deserve any attribution whatsoever, <laughs> but it's some others here that, that do. Yeah. A lot of work there. Yeah. So these are for, let me just remind everyone, part of the bonds are for the 2001 West Middle School bonds. And the other is for the 2010 school bonds for the construction of the new East Lincoln Elementary. That's <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you've, you've heard, uh, we had an opportunity to read the resolution number 1830. Uh, we've heard an explanation. Uh, is there any discussion? We have a motion in the second. Any discussion? Thank you, Sue. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> good. No, good point. All right, all those in favor of uh, resolution number 1830, vote green, opposed, vote red. Person passes six to zero. Well, I've got two agendas here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, anyone have any other business? Seeing none, we are adjourned. We go into the beer board portion of the agenda. We have one item on the consent agenda. 20-BB18, minutes of the June 8th Beer Board meeting. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Well, I'll approve. Second. by Ms. Blackwell. Second by Ms. Dillon. All those in favor of the consent agenda is presented. Vote green. Opposed? Vote red. Motion passes 6 to 0. No other business. We are adjourned. Everyone have a great evening. Great day. Thank you for...